Here we are looking at geometric linear transformations in R2. Now, since matrix transformations are linear, we know that these transformations are completely determined by how they affect the column vectors of the identity matrix. So in this section, instead of simply showing all of the images of the elementary vectors E sub 1 and E sub 2, we're going to be looking at what a transformation does to the identity matrix geometrically. So to get us started here, we want to explore the unit square. And we, of course, already know what the unit square looks like. The unit square is that 2 by 2 identity matrix. We have I sub 2. So this is the matrix whose column vectors are defined by the elementary vectors, E sub 1, E sub 2. Or in other words, our beautiful 2 by 2 matrix. We have the first column vector, 1, 0. Our second column vector, 0, 1. Now, graphically, this identity matrix looks like the unit square. So here is our first elementary vector, E sub 1. Again, with the, or the vector with the components, 1, 0. And here is our second elementary vector, E sub 2 with the components 0, 1. So we can use these elementary vectors to create that unit square. Now in particular, we are going to be focusing on the unit square and four geometric transformations of this square. We're first going to explore projections. So projecting this unit square onto one of the axes. We're also going to look at reflections. So reflecting these, or this unit square, across one of the axes or a diagonal line. We'll also explore contractions and expansions. So shrinking and stretching this unit square. And last but not least, we will be exploring the geometric transformation of shearing. So get excited. Here we go. So here we go. The first geometric transformation that we are exploring is projections. And we have two cases to consider here. The first case is a projection onto the x sub 1 axis. So looking at the unit square, what we're doing is we're taking this unit square and projecting it onto that x sub 1 axis. So this new line here is the projection onto that x sub 1 axis. So let's take a moment and think about the images. So we can see here that the vector E sub 1 hasn't changed. So the elementary vector E sub 1 is being mapped to itself. But notice that the elementary vector E sub 2 is changing. This vector is being mapped to the origin, or the zero vector. So how are we going to define the standard matrix of T? Well, the standard matrix of T in this case is matrix A, where the first column vector is still 1, 0, but our second column vector is now 0, 0. Now, in case 2, we are taking the unit square and projecting it onto the x sub 2 axis. So again, let's begin by considering the unit square. So we are going to take this unit square and project it onto that x sub 2 axis. So here is the new projection. Now, let's think about what these elementary vectors are being mapped to. So in this case, we can see that this first elementary vector, e sub 1, is being mapped to the origin, or again, the zero vector and that the elementary vector e sub 2 remains unchanged. So this vector is mapping to itself. So we'll use this now to define the standard matrix of T. So we have matrix A is that 2 by 2 matrix, whose first column vector is now 0, 0, and whose second column vector remains 0, 1. The next geometric transformation that we are exploring is reflections. So our first reflection is a reflection of the unit square through the x sub 1 axis. So beginning by looking at our unit square, 
we're taking this unit square and we're going to reflect it right across that x sub 1 axis. So this is leaving us with the new geometric square that looks like so. So we want to ask ourselves, how are these elementary vectors changing? Or in other words, what are they being mapped to? What is their image under the action of this transformation? Well, we can see that this first elementary vector, vector e sub 1, is being mapped to itself. It doesn't change. However, the elementary vector e sub 2 is the vector that is being reflected across the x sub 1 axis. So in other words, it is being mapped to a negative version of itself, or minus vector e sub 2. So therefore, the standard matrix of T is the 2 by 2 matrix with the first column as 1, 0, the second column as 0, negative 1. So the second reflection that we are considering is the reflection through the x sub 2 axis. So again, let's begin here by thinking about the geometric interpretation of our unit square. So we're going to take this unit square and reflect it across the x sub 2 axis, leaving us with another square. However, this square is in quadrant 2. So we're asking ourselves again, what are the images of these elementary vectors? What are they being mapped to? So we can see here that the first elementary vector, vector e sub 1, is the vector that is being reflected across the x sub 2 axis. So this is mapping to a negative version of itself, or minus e sub 1. Now the second elementary vector, e sub 2, remains unchanged. The transformation of, or the image of the elementary vector, e sub 2, is itself. So therefore, the standard matrix of T is the matrix whose column vectors are negative 1, 0, 0, 1. And last but not least, we want to think about the geometric transformation of the unit square that is reflected through the origin. So in other words, we are going to first reflect this unit square across the x sub 1 axis and then reflect the unit square across the x sub 2 axis. So that means that both elementary vectors are reflected here. The elementary vector e sub 1 is reflected across the x sub 2 axis, and the elementary vector e sub 2 is reflected across the x sub 1 axis, leaving us with a unit square, but in quadrant 3. So again, the elementary vector e sub 1 is being mapped to a negative version of itself, or minus elementary vector e sub 1, and the elementary vector e sub 2 is also being mapped to a negative version of itself, minus the elementary vector e sub 2. And therefore, the standard matrix of T is defined by the 2 by 2 matrix, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Continuing with our geometric interpretations of reflections of the unit square, the next reflection we are considering is the reflection through the line x sub 2 equals x sub 1. So looking at our unit square here, we're going to take this unit square and reflect it across the diagonal line x sub 2 is equal to x sub 1. So our standard diagonal line. Now, this case, we need to be very mindful of what the elementary vectors are being mapped to. So we have the elementary vector e sub 1 is being reflected across this line. And the elementary vector e sub 2 is also being reflected across this line. So while this leaves us with a unit square still in quadrant 1, these mappings or these reflections will change the standard matrix of T. So again, we have the elementary vector e sub 1 is reflected across this diagonal line. So it is being mapped to the elementary vector e sub 2. And the elementary vector e sub 2, again, is being reflected across this diagonal line. So it's being mapped to elementary vector e sub 1. And so therefore, the standard matrix of T is the 2 by 2 matrix A, defined by the column vectors 0, 1, 1, 0.
And the last reflection that we are considering is the reflection of the unit square through the line x sub 2 equals minus x sub 1. So again, starting by considering our geometric interpretation of the unit square, we are going to take this square and reflect it across the negative standard diagonal line. So in other words, the elementary vector e sub 1 is being reflected across this line to the x sub 2 axis. And again, the elementary vector e sub 2 is being reflected across this line to the e sub 1 axis. So we are left here with a unit square in quadrant 3. And so looking at these reflections, we can see that the elementary vector e sub 1 is being reflected or mapped to minus the elementary vector e sub 2. And the elementary vector e sub 2 is being reflected across this line and therefore is being mapped to minus the elementary vector e sub 1 leaving us with the standard matrix of t, 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0. The next geometric transformation in R2 we are considering is that of contractions and expansions. So stretching and shrinking that unit square. Now I want you to note that here we are going to let k be any scalar our little hearts desire. Now first things first, let's consider horizontal contractions and horizontal expansions. So if we let our scalar k be greater than 0 but less than 1, this means that we are horizontally contracting our unit square by a factor of k. So we are going to be left with this rectangular region in quadrant 1. Now, if we go ahead and let k be greater than 1, this means that we are horizontally expanding this unit square, again, by a factor of k. So we, in this case, we are left with a slightly larger rectangular region in quadrant 1. Now, notice here that we can use the same standard matrix of t in both cases. Are you observing how the only elementary vector affected here is e sub 1? And it's affected by that factor, or that scalar, k. So your standard matrix of t is the 2 by 2 matrix, k, 0, 0, 1. Now our second case is considering vertical contractions and ex vertical expansions in R2. So here, if we let our scalar k be greater than 0 but less than 1, this means that we are vertically contracting the unit square by a factor of k. So again, here we are left with a slightly smaller rectangular region in quadrant 1. Now similarly, if we go ahead and let our scalar k be greater than 1, this means that we are vertically expanding the unit square by, again, a factor of k. So in this case, we are left with a slightly larger rectangular region in quadrant 1. Now again, notice here that, that the only elementary vector affected is e sub 2. And it's affected by that scalar k. So we can define the same standard matrix of t for both the contraction and the expansion. So the standard matrix of t is that 2 by 2 matrix, 1, 0, 0, k. So the last geometric transformation of the unit square is shears. And we have two cases, horizontal shears and vertical shears. Now, for both cases, we are going to go ahead and let k be any scalar we want. So, the first type of shear is a horizontal shear. So, case one, if this scalar k is negative, or if it's less than zero, then we're taking the elementary vector e sub 2 and shifting it k units to the left and your elementary vector e sub 1 remains as it is, so we have a slanted 
unit square. Now, similarly, if our scalar k is greater than zero or positive, this means that we are going to shift the elementary vector e sub 2 k units to the right. And your elementary vector e sub 1 remains as it is. And so we can again see here that we now have a slightly slanted square. So before we define the standard matrix of T, let's think about the components of these shifted vectors. So again, the elementary vector E sub 2 is being mapped to a vector that's been shifted K units to the left or the right. So that means that the x component of this vector will be k, and the y component is 1. And that's in both cases, because k is arbitrary. Now, in both cases, the elementary vector e sub 1 is simply mapped to itself. So that's the vector with components 1, 0. And so therefore, the standard matrix of t for both horizontal shears is the 2 by 2 matrix with the first column vector as 1, 0, the second column vector as k, 1. And last but not least, vertical shears. So again, if that scalar k is negative or less than 0, this means that the elementary vector e sub 1 is being mapped to a vector who has been shifted down k units. And the elementary vector e sub 2 is mapped to itself. So again, we see another slightly slanted square. And very similarly, if that scalar k is positive or if it's greater than 0, this means that the elementary vector e sub 1 is being mapped to a vector that has been shifted up k units. And again, the elementary vector e sub 2 is simply mapped to itself. And we have that slightly slanted square. Now, before we go ahead and define the standard matrix of T, let's think about the components of the new shifted vectors. So in both cases, the elementary vector E sub 1 has been shifted or is being mapped to a vector that is shifted down K units. So the X component is still 1, but the Y component is K. And that's the same in both cases because k is arbitrary. And the elementary vector e sub 2 is mapped to itself. So therefore, the standard matrix of T for both cases is the 2 by 2 matrix A, whose first column vector has components 1k, and whose second column vector has components 0, 1.